Hey, Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to be looking at upsampling, downsampling, dithering, and uh, rounding air quantization, and how that can sort of affect your audio quality. So I have an instance of SoundForge open, and we know from, I'm assuming that you've watched my Digital Audio Basic series. So you know that bit depth only affects your dynamic range, and that's freaking it. When people, there's there's a whole a lot of other misconceptions about bit depth, but that's pretty much all it does. So if we took this here piece of audio right now, it sounds like this. And it, it is a 32-bit 44.1 file. That's what this is. Now we could come up here to, this is Sony SoundForge, by the way. And now let's do some converting. Let's do, we're going to be messing with the bit depth. So if we go to process, bit depth converter. And so we click on that, and now we have this bit depth converter. And you see that we have dither here. Now, dither, what it does is there's actually a problem that happens in the encoding stage determining whether the things, so this emerges from silence. I picked it on purpose. It's part of my sample pack reversal. Um, Composite Gloves is on my website. There's a free version and there's a paid version where they have like a whole lot more uh, samples. And what it is, is a bunch of, it's a bunch of sounds that appear out of silence and get bigger. The problem with really, really quiet sounds that appear out of nowhere is that uh, when your converter is trying to figure out whether or not it's one or zero, it becomes less accurate as you go further and further down the chain. Converters have gotten loads better as we've gone along. But one of the ways we combat this is because they, they, they begin to make errors. And what happens is these errors add up. And errors that add up means distortion. Distortion is not something you want. You, you know, it's very hard. Noise, like just noise, like picture like you're on the beach and you hear the, the crashing of the waves. It's relaxing. You can put it in the background, no big deal. But distortion, a whole nother deal. It's like someone crackling paper next to your ear. Like it's just not going to go away. So what we'll do is we'll take those last bits that determine that very quiet level and then we will, we will randomize them. And that will actually replace, but since randomized, it'll essentially be noise, and that's better than distortion. So we call that dithering. Now, that happens at the end of a lot of your mixer tracks. The bit depth that actually happens in your DAW and plugins can vary. Um, it, just, it gets kind of complicated because we, we could say blanket statements like, oh, everything works like this, but we know that this, this is DSP, man. It's freaking crazy. I'm not like an expert on DSP, but I've read just a little bit on the books that I've read. I was like, holy cow, this gets uh, like pretty weird fast. So, unless you're like into math and stuff and you know all, if you are if you have your math stuff down, then it doesn't get that weird very fast. But what we have here is we have some silence at the beginning. And by, let's say, let's hear what it sounds like at 8-bit. You'll actually just hear this, except for our dynamic range will go down. We can now only, re rep we can now only represent a much smaller dynamic range. So if we preview this, check out this. It'll just sound like noise, but you'll still hear this in the background. So people like to credit bit depth changes to like a lot of other things. But that's pretty much all it is. So with dithering, what we're going to do is we're going to go to 32-bit float. And there's, yeah, we're not going to talk about any of this madness. And we have a couple different kinds. We have half rectangular, rectangular, triangle, tri uh, triangle, and Gaussian. Now there's a couple different kinds too. There's the equal loudness contour kind. And there's, you, do, you use different dithers for different things. So some dithers are employed without you even knowing about it. And those are the ones that keep your audio just sounding nice as you go from track to track. Other dithers are what's called noise shaping dithers that takes the noise and they'll actually give you more dynamic range on certain frequencies in your spectrum. So you could actually get more dynamic range out of 16-bit than 16-bit should be able to offer. However, uh, it'll put it all out just outside the audio spectrum. The noise is still there. It just shifted it up, basically. And what happens is if you try to work with a piece of audio that's been dithered in that sense, when you bring it back, when you work with it, it's going to bring that noise back down through various processes as soon as you start working on it. So we do not want that. So it's great for a final dither. For that final go round, it's good. It's not that great for future processing. And so what's great about this is we can preview it. So we're going to leave it at 32-bit float because... Um, actually, you know what? A 32-bit float, well, let's just see what we can hear. So that's equal loudness contour if you keep on, so we can keep working with it. But we're going to go with high-pass contour. So it's going to shove it up there. It uses a, a filter and some other things. And so, oh, junk. Did that just disappear? No, that's still there. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to preview it. And I'm talking about my other screen. It just disappeared. It kind of freaked me out. So we have a high-pass triangle. We're going to do, first, let's do none. So this is what it sounds like now. And so nothing. 
So uh, it's because of a process of our bit converter now that we're gonna we're gonna get that pretty much every time. Okay, now let's go to half. Let's go to half rectangular. Check this one out. All right. Uh, you know what? Let's to make this listenable. So we want to just get a feel for what theoretically is going on down there. I actually wouldn't use half rectangular. You could try experimenting. They may they'll produce different results. But let's go to eight bit. It'll be really obvious what's going on, right? So we have half rectangular. Here's none. That's what it sounds like. Let's go to half rectangular. And then we'll go to rectangular. And this is triangle. Now remember this high pass contour. And this one is uh, high pass triangle. I think I just did that one. Did I do triangle? Anyways, you can see this one just has like a little high pass on it. And then this one's Gaussian. I prefer high pass triangle. So, uh, you see, that's quite impressive to get that amount of range out of 8 bits. Now, let's go down to equal loudness contour and then check it out. It sounds different. So, this one, so yeah, different reasons, different things. Just so you know, so when you're doing dither and someone says dither, a lot of times DAWs, like, I believe FL, you, you right click and you can enable dithering, but it doesn't tell you what kind of dithering it does. So, sometimes, uh, and a lot of times when I'm working on projects with uh, my colleagues, I will bounce stuff out without dithering. Because, for example, if you're working on a film project, if someone down the line is going to dither the final dither, then you don't want to be doing that. You're going to make it, it's not going to sound as clean or as good. So you don't do that. And so that's something that, that goes on inside your audio. Now let's look at sample rate converters. So we can do uh, up sampling and down sampling and all sorts of mumbo jumbo. Like you drop a, a, a 44.1 and let's say that you want to do some mastering. So you're going to up sample that sucker to like 96, 96.2 or whatever. And you do that because you want to do your processing at a higher sample rate so that it has higher resolution. The problem is if you record it at a lower rate though, that upsampling could introduce error on its own. You could have all sorts of issues. And you generally want to stay in multiples. It's just easier math. But uh, there's a cool website called uh, the SRC, Sample Rate Converter Infinite Wave. And what it does is basically they have these nifty charts that show you they've, they've actually documented all these different sample rate converters. And it's pretty cool. And there's a whole bunch of different results. We're just going to look at the sweep for now. And essentially, I picked, I have by default up two really good examples. So we see we have the Isotope 64-bit SRC uh, phase, blah, 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 blah. And the Adobe Audition one, actually, in uh, CS6, which is, these are both phenomenal. They're very, very clean. And so as you see more stuff, all you need to really know is that it's basically unwanted stuff it's not as clean now of course can like the audible difference and stuff it's not that big a deal but if you're a real stickler for quality you want to stay away there's some though that are pretty bad so let's go ahead so that, that one looks pretty good this one looks pretty good so these are these are examples let's go to let's say for example fl12 and this has the 512 point sync option enabled and you see it's okay but we have some noise and we have some some air right here well, DSP Quattro, it's a mastering software on excellent. Look at that. It's kind of interesting to see. So you want to, what the processing might be excellent and the bouncing might be excellent, but the conversion might not be excellent. And so these are just sweeps. So this is 96K to 44.1. DS, uh, DP, DP is pretty good actually. And... Let's see here. Ableton's in here. Let's look at Ableton, you know? Audacity. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Actually, that's not that bad. There are some in here that are... It's a... There's a couple in here that are pretty bad. Most of them are okay. This is just stuff if you're a stickler. Like, that. that's not good. That's... Don't bitwig. Mm-hmm. Free. Is, I think it's free. I don't know. And then, uh... Yeah, just not good. Cubase. That's actually kind of surprising for Cubase. 
So you want to be careful about what you use to do your sample rate conversion. But essentially, that's all that is. That's all this video is about. It's a small video. If you have any questions about this stuff, you know, let me know. I'll try and help you. Uh, if I got something wrong or you feel impressed to say something about this, go ahead and share your knowledge. I don't claim to be like the expert on this, but I do know a little bit and I've had some experience with this stuff and I've, you know, read a couple books. And so I just want to share with you some stuff that I wish I had known when I was doing stuff like this because they're kind of important decisions to know about. What are you going to record at? What, when are you going to convert at? So when you're mastering, if you're going to upsample to get that higher pristine quality of your processing, and you also have to have plugins that will support it, because some plugins will just change it back to what it was, and now you're dealing with them doing crap, um, you want to be aware of these types of, types of things. I have a lot, pretty much all my instructors actually, don't like using master channels and Pro Tools because they say it collapses the mix. It does things, and they can hear it because they've worked with audio so much in that DAW, they know. So what they'll use is they'll use a print track or they'll use an auxiliary or they'll, they'll use something else. They won't use a, a uh, master. So if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.